In this video, we'll be taking a look at the compression task, one of the many components available in Task Factory, a product from Pragmatic Work Software. One of the more common tasks you'll do when working with SQL Server integration services is create files. Often you have to create them, for example, to upload to a vendor. In this demo package, I have a data flow task. The data flow task has two components. The first component reads data from a file. If I open it up, you can see it's a simple select statement. It has two columns, ID and info. And if I do a preview, you can see it's just pretty simple data. This is just some test data where I had an ID column and then I had a text column which just says item and then the ID padded out nicely. This is just to give us some data to work with. You can see the script to set that up here where I create the table and then I populate it. Returning here to the demo, you can see I've got an output file which sends it to my flat file connection manager, which I've defined here. And it simply sends the file out to a specific folder on the hard drive. You can see here, I don't currently have any files in that folder. And after running the package, you now have a million rows in that file. And you can see it does indeed exist. But when we take a look at this, we see the file size in this particular case isn't overly large. However, what if you had a file that was super, super big and you really needed to compress that thing down so that you could send it up to a vendor via FTP or maybe you wanted to send it out uh, to folks via email, for example? Well, there are things you could do in the past, kind of workarounds, using scripting, but today there's a much better way and that, of course, is using the compression tool that comes built into Task Factory. Let's jump back over here, and we're going to come up to our control flow. And you can see on the left, I have some of my Task Factory components. And the one we're going to drag in is the Task Factory compression task. We'll hook it up. And let's uh, make this look nice. We'll just left align it, make it the same width. By the way, this little layout toolbar is really handy. Uh, you can just right click and go to the layout and it allows you to easily left align, make things the same width, height, what have you. So here in our compression task, we're going to open it up and you can see we have a couple of options. Not only can we compress files, we can uncompress them. So we could go either way with this. It then asks us, well, where's the file at that we want to compress? We can store that file name in a variable or we can use a connection manager. Since we already have a connection manager set up, we'll use it. Down here, we have more options for the destination file. We can have the file name stored in a variable. We can use a destination connection manager. And we can choose to overwrite the destination file, which I'll do here. We'll pick our connection manager by creating a new one. We'll create a new file connection and we're going to tell it we want to create a file and the file will create this is the folder I've got it set up for and we'll call this output from connection manager zip we'll click OK now if we come up here to the advanced tab you can see I have different compression types I can pick zip, gzip, br2, and z format and we'll just go with the standard zip. And for zip files, we can also set things like the compression level, uh, passwords. We can even opt to create a self-extracting exe if we want to. For now, we'll take this and go OK. And now if we run this, our package is completed. And if we come down here to the folder, we see we have our zip file out there. We can drill down into it. You can see there it is from within Windows. I can open that file up from a zip utility such as 7z. And there it is open in 7-zip. And it's just a standard zip file that we can then turn around and send to somebody. I mentioned that you could create files using either a file connection or a variable. 
Down here I've got a variable set up and I've given it the name output from variable. Let's change our compression task to now use the variable for the output. I'm going to come over here and click on destination stored in variable. Now it asks me to pick that variable name out. And I only have one output file. I can also take the opportunity to create a new one here if I want to. So we'll just click output file and we'll click OK. And now when I run this, and we'll complete it. Come down here. And you can see I now have my output from variable zip file. The cool thing about being able to use variables or the output destinations is you can easily manipulate that to whatever you want it to be. Especially variables are extremely easy to just pop into a script task. For example, you could actually append the date to whatever file you were creating. When you have a need to compress files, the Task Factory Compression Task is by far the easiest way to get your files compressed down to a compact format for storage, emailing, FTPing, or whatever it is you need to do. To learn more about the Task Factory components, visit us at pragmaticworks.com.